Hello students, let's learn social studies. When you hear the word social studies, what comes in your mind? What is the difference of social studies and social science? When we say social studies, it's the integrated study of social science to promote effective citizenry. While social science is the field of sciences concerned with the studies of the social life of human groups and individuals, including economics, geography, history, political science, psychology, social studies, and sociology. History is often said to be the queen or mother of the social sciences. It outdates the other social sciences, having appeared in school, long before the others with the possible exemption of geography. It is the basis of all subjects of study which fall under the category of humanities and social sciences. It is also the basis of the study of philosophy, politics, economics, and even art and religion. No wonder it is considered an indispensable subject in the complete education of human. We have word meanings here. Units, a single thing person or group forming part of a whole. When we say union, the act of uniting two or more things, the states of being united. Thai states before Ayutthaya, political structure of early Thai states and societies. During the millennium before Ayutthaya, the Thai peoples were loosely organized in small units known as Muang, which consisted of a loose union of villages protected by a central fortified town known as Muang. The size of a Muang was set by the valley where it was located. The leader of a Muang protected villagers from danger beyond the valley in in exchange for the work. The main source of political strength. If the leader of the Muang was a high-ranking noble or monarch, then the fortified center became a Chiang. What is Muang Yang Chiang? So you can see here in the picture how the, they build Muang, Wuyang, and Chiang. Word meaning again, we have kingdom, politically organized community or major territorial unit having a monarchical form of government headed by a king or queen. King, a male sovereign or monarch, a man who holds by life tenure and usually by hereditary right, the chief authority over a country and people. Self-governed, by itself or having self-government, as a state or community, independent, self-regulating, self-determining, exercising self-restraint or self-control. Autonomous, having the right or power of self-government and autonomous territory. Kingdoms were usually nothing more than alliances between the leaders of several Muang who united under one of their fellow Muang chiefs. The Muang still governed themselves for the most part without much interference from the king. We say that Muang were autonomous, which means self-governed. Even though they were loosely united under the king, these alliances depended entirely upon a personal relationships between these leaders. So the death of a popular and powerful king often brought new disunity and political chaos. Many such kingdoms endured for only generations or two. A few survived more than a century. As you can see, we have Sokotai, the ancient kingdom before, and then Ayutthaya, Tunburi, and Ratanakusi. Another word meaning, Political system are the formal and informal political processes by which 
decisions are made concerning the use, production, and distribution of resources in any given society. How about paternalistic? Making decisions for other people rather than letting them take responsibility for their own lives. The most interesting feature of the Thai's political system was that it was truly paternalistic. Indeed, the Thai called it father governs children. Every person in Mulan could bring his problem or problems personally before his chief or even the king himself. There was a bell in front of the palace for this purpose. So that is what they are doing before. Now, what is a paternal rule? When we say paternal rule, these ideas were briefly replaced in 1279 when Kim Ramkamheng came to the throne. Ramkamheng departed from the Khmer tradition and created instead a concept of what we call paternal rule, in which the king governs his people as a father would govern his children. Another word meaning unity, the quality or state of being one, autonomy, the right or condition of self-government, paternalism, the policy or practice on the part of people in positions of authority of restricting the freedom and responsibilities of those subordinate to them in the subordinate supposed best interest. Uniform, remaining the same in all cases and at all times, unchanging in form or character. Stable, firmly established, fixed, not changing, or we say permanent. These features of voluntary unity through personal relationships, local autonomy and paternalism contained to be the virtually uniform mode of Thai kingship until Ayutthaya's monarchy was built on the Khmer and Hindu model of a centralized monarchy ruled by a god king which absolutely power. For good or evil, Ayutthaya's government was at least stable in comparison and built a state that endured for over centuries laying the foundation for the modern state of Thailand. The original Thai state of Thailand, as we have seen, historians and archeologists still debate how, why, when, where, and especially from where. The Thai originally arrived in what would become Thailand, but all experts agree by the 13th century, the Thais had become a force to be reckoned with in Indochina. And Thai princess ruled over states as a part as Lana, Supanapum, that is Supanburi this time, Nakonsi Tamarat and Sokotai. The state that is still regarded by most Thais as, as the first Thai kingdom is Sokotai. However, there were in fact other Thai states at the same time as Sokotai. Most notably Supanapum is the central plains and Nan, Lana and Payao in the north. These were founded by Thai settlers about the same times as Sokotai. Won their independence from Khmer about the same time as, and in large part because of Sokotai, and in fact endured as semi-autonomous states long after Sokotai was annexed by Ayutthaya. But centuries before any of these Thai states, there was the mysterious country of Yunok, which is its equally mysterious city of Shantan. What is stated in the Chronicle? A record or narrative description of past events. Tell us that the Thai of Yunok had a lot of contact and trade with the Khmer Empire 
which ultimately invaded and conquered Yono. What built in 638 AD? The original city of Shenzhen. A large, a larger city was built and eventually became the center of a Thai principality. That is after 93 years, okay, they built a large city. Why Shenzhen was in dark age? Because of an earthquake and centuries of raging war that caused the disappearance of its records. Who established Shenzhen? King Meng Rai. That's correct. What is known about Shenzhen in the 14th century? Had eight watchtowers and 11 gates. One of the best planned cities of that time. A center of Buddhist thought, a city of constant threat of invasion. Why is Shenzhen important? Original birthplace of Lana Kingdom, a source of dynasty that would eventually reign in Siam's Ayutthaya period. So in this map, there you go, Shenzhen. Okay, so it's located in the northern part of Thailand. So what is you know, Nakhon Chaiburi's three Shenzhen? That was in the year 545 AD to 1262 AD. Shenzhen is small district of Shanghai province. And the ancient city of Shenzhen is one of the oldest settlements in the kingdom of Thailand. It is located along the Mekong River. The residents of Shenzhen have a very easygoing and peaceful lifestyle. Many of the residents live nearby one of the hundreds of ancient structure that once graced this city. So this is how we can see the okay, relics that left behind. The Shenzhen was built by Sen Lu a grandson of King Meng Rai the Great, who built a wall around the city in the year 1328 AD. The city measured 1,400 meters by 3,000 meters. Shenzhen is built on an older settlement, which is thought to be Muang Nunyang. This may be one reason why we often hear reference to place called Muang Nunyang Shenzhen or Hiranakon Minyang. So Shenzhen was built by Sen Flu, as we said a while ago, a grandson of King Mengrai, great, who built a wall around the city, right? Okay. So, <clears throat> next kingdom, we have Kingdom of Payao. It is founded in the year 1096, independent 1250, and became vassal of Lana in the year 1338 and deserted 1600. Okay, so we can see Hoyao in the northern part of Thailand. When Payao was founded, in the year 1096, it was a small, minor, and unimportant city-state kingdom. Why? In the 13th century, however, it gained enough importance to be an equal partner of Lana and Sokotai. In the famous pact of the three kings, Payao's king, Ngamuang, that is 1,238 to 1,298, was a peer colleague and ally of the two most illustrious king of the day. That is Rangkameng of Sokotai and Mengrai of Chiang Mai. To preserve the liberty of the north against the Khmer and Burmese, and no doubt to consolidate their power, the three kings took a blood oath pledging their mutual support and cooperation. 
there was peace between the three kingdoms throughout the reign of these kings. But two generations later, Payao was once again a very minor little kingdom and under threat from its neighbors. In the year 1338, a later king of Lana captured Payao and made it part of Lana. During the Burmese rulership of Lana, the city was deserted. In 1897, the land that had once been Payao's was made part of the province Shanghai. On August 28, 1977, it was split off from Shanghai again and was made into its own province. Another kingdom is Lana, found in 1259-1292. The Vaisal of Burma, 1558. Vaisal of Siam, 1775. Annexed, 1892. So Lana, the great kingdom in the north of Thailand, built around its capital of Chiang Mai consisted of several semi-autonomous feudal vassals stayed under the overlordship, the king of Chiang Mai. So Lana endured as a sovereign kingdom for 300 years and remained autonomous into the ninth, 19th century. Throughout its, its history, Lana has had a distinctive culture and art, which is, we call it Shansen art, that can still be seen in the north of Thailand. The Emerald Buddha, the most sacred object in Thailand, was made in Lana sometime during the kingdom first two centuries. So Lana's first leader was King Meng Rai the Great. Meng Rai has succeeded his father as the leader of the Shangsen Kingdom in 1259. In 1262, he founded the city Shanghai as his capital naming it after himself. He extended his kingdom quickly from the borders of Lao to Lampun by unifying the many local Thai rulers of the area under his leadership. Then turning south, he attacked, captured, and annexed the ancient Mon kingdom of Haripunshai in 1292, the area around the modern-day cities Lampang and Lampun. So in 1296, he founded the city of Chiang Mai as the new capital of the kingdom. With help from the allies, Ngamuang of Payao and Rangkamheng of Songhotai. So in here, Lana flourished for over 200 years. His power, culture, arts, and literature reached their senate. When we say senate, top in the middle of 5th century during the reign of King Tilo Kora. In 1449, Lana captured and annexed Nan, capital of a Thai Lu people. In 1477, the Eighth Buddhist Council was held near Chiang Mai working to improve Buddhist scriptures. So the kingdom decline started in the early 6th century after the death of King Praya Keo in 1526. Rival princes fought for the throne. Some kings were assassinated, others were forced to abdicate. This disunity and political instability invited the attack from Burma. So in 1558, Lana surrendered, became Burma's basal, when the dynasty of Meng Rai died out in 1578, Burma sent its own princesses to rule Lana. So the Thai kings of Ayutthaya tried to take Lana from the Burmese several times over Ayutthaya's whole, whole 500 year history, but they never succeeded. Even though around 1,600 King Naresuan and later in 1662, King Narai, both captured Chiang Mai. 
they were forced to retreat by the Burmese after just a short time. After the Burmese destroyed Ayutthaya, King Taksin drove the Burmese out of Siam. In the north, King Taksin helped Prince Kawila of Lampang to drive out the Burmese. One night of February 14, 1775, Chiang Mai fell to the Thai. Prince Kawila became the first king of Lana under Siamese overlordship. So King Rama I, after ascending to the throne, awarded Kawila with more power. Kawila became the king of the North Kingdom in ruled 57 cities. So this is the how the warriors wear their costumes before. Lana long history of autonomy was mainly due to its remote location, mountainous terrain, and distinct culture. It, slim, it simply made sense to live in an autonomous basal state under modern technology made it more accessible. Thus, Lana autonomy was not last. In 1877, Siam appointed a viceroy from Bangkok to rule Lana alongside its king. So in 1892, it was formally annexed by Siam and administrated from Bangkok. The kings of Lana were reduced to figureheads with no administrative power. Upon the last king de king's death in 1939, no successor was named to replace him. So we have the Kingdom of Nan, independent city state and capital of Lu people. So, as you can see here, for centuries, Nan was a small independent kingdom, which, due to its remoteness, had a little contact and few connection with other states. The first kingdom around the city Muangpa was created in the late 13th century when they too liberated themselves from the Khmer. Its rulers, the Puka dynasty, were related to the founders of Yanshan. However, Nan became more closely tied to the Sokotai, as Nan was easier to reach from the south than from the east or west in the 14th century century, the capital was moved to its present location at Nan. So in the year 15th century, when Sokotai declined in power, Nan became a vessel of the kingdom of Lana. Okay. In year 1788, the Burmese were finally driven out. However, Nan had accepted the overlordship of the new Siamese rulers and so was not independent. In the year 1893, after the Baknam crisis, Siam forced Nan, they steal Siam's vessel to give a large part of eastern Nan to the French. But during all this period, Nan held on to some degree of autonomy. Just as, wa as with Lana, this was due primarily to its remote mountainous locations and distinct culture. So that is about Nan. Okay, so that's all. Thank you for listening.